Hi. So, um, how was your day? I thought it'd be easier if I send you a message like this rather than just typing things out. Today has been one of the strangest, weirdest, kind of horrifying days I've been through in a long time. There are bad days that I have. I haven't had them in a long time. But this one was particularly bad. This one was starting when I woke up and it just kept getting worse through the day. And I had moments at work where I was just crying because I couldn't stop. There's no hiding, and I never have tried to do so, that um, I have depression, I am bipolar, makes me technically mentally ill. And for the longest time, I kept that bottled up inside. Just, you know, wouldn't talk about it, wouldn't let it out. I would let the demons come at me and I would do my best to push them back. And that went on for not years, but decades. A very long time. There were a few times when the demons almost got me. I'm not proud of that. I don't think any of us are. None of us like to admit to that sort of weakness. In 2008, I was so bad, I pretty much freaked out at work and ended up after being conjoled by uh, someone I knew from HR that I needed help. I ended up doing a 48 hour stay in what we like to refer to as a facility. Um, I was in a mental institution for 48 hours, which was a very interesting time because I had uh, a schizophrenic as a roommate and I was actually propositioned twice for sex by women one of whom came at me with the rather smooth line of, you know, you're not as crazy as a lot of these other people, so I, I consider myself safe with you. There you go. Not as crazy as the others, so you're good for sex. A couple of things started changing in 2011. I learned to get more in touch with my feelings. I was helped along in that area. That was when I actually first came out. And it was a huge, scary relief. And then in 2012, with further cajoling, I got into therapy. And then just this year, because of various work-related issues, I was finally able to start actually transitioning. So a couple of things have helped me reach the point where I did what I did today. One of them I will show you is this. Believe it or not, that is my estrogen. 
it's actually about probably a six month supply right there shark week in a bottle and trust me it does have that effect it's had four shots so far that's helping me in some ways because it's changing my hormonal balance and well you know, getting rid of all that bad testosterone and replacing it with all the good estrogen and of course all of you watching this know what that estrogen can do to you mm -hmm. we all know that now don't we that's why I call it shark week in a bottle and my transition going from that I never talk about it keep everything to myself silent steadfast stoned up guy to I now cry at the drop of a hat woman that I'm becoming it let me do what I did today it's what we call as a cry for help most of the time it comes across in the form of um, an attempted suicide you know, cut your wrists over the on pills that sort of thing um, I don't have any of those instruments and I don't have any pills in the house or at least I don't have a lot but as I said on the phone when I was called at one point I was at least smart enough to realize that I was thinking I should go home just take the day off from work go home and try to get this all behind me and then a few minutes or so later I realized that I live 12 stories up and I have a balcony and you know you don't want to have that combination when you have suicidal impulses and you know that in two seconds it's all over so I did what I did today because I just had to get it out. I had to say today was a horrible day. Today is killing me. And then I got off. I figure I'll work on my programs. I'll, I'll focus my mind on something else and put it all away. I didn't realize that you guys were actually going to go off on a search to find me. I should have known better because when I heard that voice on the phone, she kept saying, do you know who this is? <laughs> Which kind of parallels something um, I wrote something that's been said before. I knew who it was. I just couldn't say it. You guys, you just had to get Tanya after me, didn't you? Now you know my one weakness. If there's one person in this world I'll listen to, it's her. So we talked. I cried, talked some more, cried some more. But I came away with it with a better feeling. I do feel better. Doesn't look like it right now, but trust me, I do. And I have an understanding of the friends I have. who 
I guess in a way I was hoping somebody would do something. Somebody would reach out to me. Technically, I just thought, eh, I'll come back later and tell everybody I'm sorry. Because I don't like to cause drama. I'm Miss Anti-Drama. I'm the keeper of the Drama Llama. I try to keep that sucker pinned up. But you got Tanya out looking for me. And we talked. And to show you where I'm at right now, in terms of my frame of mind, is I have to relate a little story to you. Because when I say, if there's one person in this world I'll listen to, it's her. That's the truth. See, I have this novel I've been working on, writing on it for almost ten months now. Another week or so, it will be ten months. This actually originated in something that I worked on three years ago with Tanya and she not only helped me create some of the characters but some of the setting and where it actually takes place. It was really one of the only creative collaborations I've ever done where I had a lot of fun doing it. And then in 2012 when I was working for the state of Indiana, we talked about this, and she said, you have to write this story. You have to tell their tale. And if there's one thing that I learned from my very close and early association with Tanya, it's when she gives me a suggestion, it's more than a suggestion. Or at least that's how I interpret it. It's, it's not very often that I get to tell her no. And when I do, I have to fight for that right. Um, as she told me one time, we were arguing over something in, one, in this story that uh, it took me 45 minutes to get to the point of letting her know that I wasn't going to change something. And even she said, you probably feel as if you've been through one of the toughest fights in the world. And that's just sort of the relationship we have. Um, she tells me to do something and I, I either do it or I come up with some really, really, really good reasons why I'm not going to do it. So I promised her certain things today when we spoke on the phone and I know better than to go back on a promise to her that would be very bad uh, she wouldn't take it well she just wouldn't and I know that so I made promises I now have a different outlook for things. I have stuff to look forward to. You know, things. None of which are related to zombies. And I want you all to know that I feel better. I really do. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm afraid to even look in the hodge for fear of what's happening. And for those of you who now know my legal name, please forget it. Because I hope within another year or so that entity will no longer exist. So please, forget my legal name. It, it's not important. 
Tanya knows it. And now some of you do too. You probably know everything about me. But most of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for helping me. I want to thank you for being for being my friends. And I want you to know that should this ever happen with any of you, some of you have my number, some of you know I'm always on the computer. I have Skype. Talk to me. I'll listen. And I promise you, I won't cause any more drama. If I'm having problems, I'll let someone know. This is how Carrie would do it. <laughs>